Okay, let's talk about the slope of a line. Of course, you can see here we have a line and it has some sort of slope. And then we have some sort of formula here. So we're going to get into all of this in a uh, second. And if you're studying the slope, uh, it's likely that you're in like a pre-algebra, algebra, algebra one, maybe algebra two, college algebra. Uh, the slope is one of these just super important mathematical concepts that you really have to have, you know, firmly down, okay, in your understanding to do well in math, uh, irrespective of what level you might be in, okay? So we're going to do a quick review on the slope. And um, But before we get started, let me go ahead and introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. And if you really want to learn from me, I have uh, over 100 plus courses, math courses. I'm going to leave a link in the description of this video uh, if you want to check out my full program of uh, my math instruction. And then, of course, um, I've been on uh, YouTube for many, many years. I have hundreds and hundreds of videos that can help you out. So hopefully you consider subscribing and liking this video if it helps you out. Okay, so with uh, that being said, let's get into the slope. All right, so what is the slope? Well, you know, the slope is just kind of what it says, right? If you use that word, hey, what is the slope? You know, how would you use that in like a sentence, right? You might say, well, here, here's the ground and here's a mountain out there, right? You might say, hey, what's the, the slope of that mountain, okay? But you're talking about what is kind of like the angle, right? What's the angle of that mountain or how steep is something, right? Well, we use this concept of the slope to describe how steep a line is in algebra, okay? So here is a line, and we have a particular line. It has a certain steepness to it. Now, a line like this, okay, would be uh, steeper, if you will, right? And then a line like this would be flatter. So we need some sort of way to um, precisely measure the steepness of lines. And we, we, uh, we don't call... We don't refer to the steepness of a line using that word steep. We talk about the slope of a line. So some real basic uh, concepts about the slope before we get going is one, the slope is indicated by some number, okay? And this little small variable m is the way we like to express that number, okay? So this number is going to uh, indicate what the slope of this line is. Now the number is almost always uh, expressed as a fraction, okay? So it's some sort of fraction. It could be like, say, two-thirds. So m could be equal to, say, two-thirds, or m could be equal to seven. Now, you might say, well, seven's not a fraction, but if you write it over one, it's a fraction. Okay, but it's just some sort of number. So this number associates some sort of steepness measure to a line. So this is what a slope is. Now, a couple of... Um, real basic things that you need to know before we get into it, that lines that rise from left to right, like this line right here, okay, it's going to have a positive slope, all right? Now, if a line falls from left to right like so, it's going to have a negative value slope. In other words, this line might have a M value of like say negative three fifths, something like that. Whereas this uh, line might have an M value of like, oh, nine uh, fourths, right? So I'm just making things up, but this is positive, this is negative. Now, a line that's perfectly horizontal has a slope value of what? Okay, let's think about it. How steep is this line? So if you're like, hmm, well, that line has no steepness to it, and you, and you would be correct, right? This has no no angle to it, no steepness to it. So a line that's perfectly horizontal has a zero slope, okay? So these have zero slopes. And then a vertical line, all right? So how steep is this line? Would be like, hmm, that's kind of weird. It's like perfectly steep. It goes totally up and down, right? It doesn't really have an angle other than straight up. And it actually turns out that a vertical, perfectly vertical lines have what we call an undefined slope, all right? Undefined slope. And we'll talk a little bit more about in a second why this is, okay? So, um, but these are some basic fundamental concepts about the slope that you should know, right? Or again, it's a number that is measuring the angle, the angle of lines on the XY plane. 
Okay, so let's go ahead and get into an example, all right? So let's go ahead and calculate the slope. Now here we have a line, okay? And here are some coordinates that are on this line. Now if you um, aren't at the stage in your uh, math class where you understand that this point right here, let's say for example, one, two, is on this line or this point four, six. In other words, if I plotted the point one, two and four, six and drew a line through it, okay, that's kind of what I'm doing here. So if you're kind of confused uh, with the graph and, and what's going on here, then maybe, you know, you, uh, this video might be a little bit too much for you at this stage, but I don't think so, okay? You can certainly kind of see what's going on here, right? So we have two points that are on this line. Okay, so if I want to calculate the slope of this line, remember I told you this line has some sort of steepness to it, some sort of slope. It's some sort of m value. Okay, so what I want to do is to calculate it. Now, I said initially it was going to be some sort of number, but technically it's a fraction, all right? And the fraction is going to um, illustrate the rise over the run of a line. Let me go back up here real quick. All right, let me just erase this and we'll talk about this here in a second. And then I'll get back to that problem. Okay, so let's take a look at this line. So I might say, hmm, how can I describe this line right here? Well, I could say, well, this particular line um, rises this much Okay, from here to here, and at the same time, it runs out this much from here to here. Okay, so it's going to run out this much and rise this much. So I might say um, the rise of this line is, let's say, 4, and the run of this line is 2. In other words, it goes out, for every 4, it goes up, it goes out 2 this way. Or every 2, it goes out this way, it goes up 4 this way. So that's one way we can measure the slope, but the technical definition of the slope is the rise over the run, okay? So for this particular line, line here, this line is rising four, okay? While at the same time running two, so four divided by two is two, okay? So this line has a slope of two, all right? So, but this is the main definition the rise over the run. Now, you can measure it right here, okay, the rise over the run, or I can measure it whatever these measurements might be, this rise divided by this run. If I, whatever measurements these are, I'm still gonna get the same answer too. Or I can go with this gigantic big triangle like so. Whatever this rise is divided by this run, it's still gonna turn out to be two. So the ratio, the ratios of the rise of the run, it's always gonna be in the same proportion, all right? So anyways, let me go back and um, answer this question right here, uh, why a vertical line is undefined, why it has no slope. So how much is this line rising right here? All right, so it would be like difficult, right? Let's say, let's say I said, okay, this line is rising six. All right, let's just make something up. It's rising six, but how much is it running? All right, running is it's going from left to right. Okay, how much is it running? Well, it's running zero. It's not doing anything, right? There's no movement from left to right. It's just static, okay? So what you end up having is a number divided by zero, and in mathematics, you can never, ever divide by zero, okay? So six divided by zero, or anything divided by zero is what we call undefined. Don't confuse that with zero divided by six, all right? Zero divided by six is zero, right? So if, you know, you, you and your uh, six friends, uh, all six of you, have no money and you want to divide it up six different ways, well, each of you get zero dollars, right? <laughs> so if you have six dollars and you want to divide it in by zero, conceptually, that makes no sense, right? So that's why that is undefined. All right, so maybe, you know, just wanted to make clear why that is the case because a lot of students... Uh, seem to be confused by that. But this is, in essence, uh, what the slope is. It's the rise over the run. And the way we measure the rise, okay, if you think about it, let me go ahead and go back here. The rise is the change in the y values, okay? So this is the y-axis right here. So the change in the y values is the uh, rise. So let's kind of do this uh, right here. 
So sometimes you'll see this little triangle that means delta or change in the y's this way. That's our rise. And then the change in the x, that's this way, right? Here's the x-axis, is our run, okay? And so this is what can, um, allows us to set up the more kind of uh, actual formula uh, for the slope. So now let's get to it. And here it is. So the slope of a line is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And these uh, x2s, x1, y2, y1, all that means is one coordinate, okay, one point uh, where you have x. Remember, these points here are x, y points, all right? That's all that is. All right, so one point, our first point will be x1, y1, and our second point on the line will be x2, y2, all right? And then we just go ahead and plug them in uh, uh, into this formula. But what we're doing, this formula right here, what this is, this is calculating the rise, and this is calculating the run, okay? The run. It's always important to understand what these formulas uh, mean because that's just going to really strengthen your understanding uh, of the slope. Right? And once you understand this, then you're going to be able to handle all kinds of different problems. All right, but this formula here, you definitely want to commit to memory. All right, so let's go ahead and actually calculate the slope of this line. All right, so here's two points that are on this line. Let's find the slope, and we'll go ahead and use the slope formula. All right, so let's go ahead and plug in our points. So one of our points, our x1, y1, will be the point 1, 2. All right, so remember that point is right here. That's one, two, so we'll call that x1, y1. And then x2, y2 will be that second point, four, six. All right, All right. so what we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna go ahead, I'm gonna calculate this two different ways, we're gonna get the same answer. So all we're gonna do, essentially, what this formula is telling us to do is to find the differences of the y's first. That's gonna be our numerator. So here's the y values. Okay, two and six. So let's go ahead and start with six first, right here. Okay, so this would be six minus the other y is two, right? So you can see here's our y values. So that's y2 minus y1, just follow the formula. So it's gonna be six minus two. Now, super, super important thing that I'm gonna say right here, okay? This will uh, help you, uh, save you many, many points um, on your test and quizzes. Now, notice I started with the six here, six minus two. I said this point, okay, I started with this point's information first, and then I subtracted this point, six minus two, okay? So because I started with this six, I got to start with this four in the denominator, all right? So this is our x's now, all right? So we're gonna subtract the x's down in the denominator because, because I started with the six here, I got to start with this information, this point's information first. Okay, so I started with the six here. So I got to start with this four down at the bottom. If you don't start, if you reverse the order, you will get this problem wrong. Okay, so we have six minus two. And then the differences of the x's is going to be four minus one. Four minus one. And that's x2 minus x1. All right, so don't let this formula intimidate you. All we're doing is subtracting the y's. And we're going to put that over the differences of the x um, coordinates. But we have to be very careful with um, the order that we do this in, or we will get the problem wrong. All right, so 6 minus 2 is, of course, 4, and 4 minus 1 is 3. And that is the slope of the line. The slope of that line is 4 thirds, okay? So again, that would be the slope of a line that passes to the point 1, 2, and four, six. Okay, now let's go ahead and see the same problem, but this time we're gonna find the differences of the y values. Uh, we're going to do this differently, okay? Let me go ahead and erase all this. All right, so. Okay, so let's say, okay, we wanna find the differences of the y values. Here are the y's. So we could say, oh, well, how about two minus six? No problem, two minus six. All right, we'll take two and we'll subtract it from six. We're finding the differences of the y's. Remember, these are our y's. But because I started with the two here first in the numerator in my calculations, when I go to find the differences of the x's, which are right here, 
I have to start with that point right there, that coordinate. Okay, this points information first, one minus four. So as long as you keep that consistent, you will get these slope problems right 100% of the time. So let's go through this. This is two minus six, that's gonna be negative four. One minus four, that's negative three. And of course, a negative divided by a negative is positive, so we get the same answer, four thirds. Okay, super, super important, okay? when it comes to something like the slope. One, gotta make sure that you're keeping consistent with the order of your coordinates when you're plugging them into the formula, just as I kind of stressed here. That's a very, very common mistake when students calculate the slope, right? That's number one. Actually, I'll give you the maybe three most common mistakes. Okay, the first one is um, the order of the x's and the y's as I just described, okay? So that's like a like a big place where students make errors. So I'm telling you, don't you know focus, you know uh, on that. Don't make a mistake on that because a lot of students make an error on it. The second thing is that students instead of going the rise over the run, they'll put the differences of the x's in the numerator, and they'll have the rise on the bottom. They'll get their uh, they'll be doing the x's in the numerator and the y's in the denominator. So they just got confused with the formula. So that's another very common mistake. And then the last thing I would say for sure is student just make, students making simple errors with their positive and negative number uh, integers, okay? So, uh, you know, like a negative divided by a negative, they just leave this as negative. In other words, you're going too fast and not focusing. So the slope, although conceptually, um, it's pretty, you know, hopefully straightforward to understand. There's a lot of little pitfalls in here that can definitely trip up uh, uh, you math students out there, okay? I've seen it time and time and time again. So take your time, focus, double check your work, uh, be neat, organized, and structured. And if you do that, you're gonna get these problems right every single time. Okay, so with that being said, um, hopefully, you have a much uh, you know stronger understanding of the slope, you know what it is, you know why we need it, okay, and of course the slope formula, and all the little common mistakes to avoid. All right, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics uh, adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.